Dr. Fred, thank you for joining us again. Uh, I want to talk about your situation first before broadening to talk about Africa as a whole. Uh, but what did you mean when you said uh, that you had been told they were coming to arrest you? And did they? Well, they haven't come, but they can still come. Uh, what we are having in Zambia today is a Mobutu Sese Seko type of regime. A regime that is intolerant, that, not, that not, does not want to accept that we live in a multi-party political dispensation and in a plural society politically. We have a regime that is also corrupt, and what I'm saying is backed by their old friends in Washington. Recently, the United States Department of State issued a report on human rights for 2022 on Zambia. And the revelations were frightening and worried. They are saying there is serious corruption in government. There are serious restrictions on freedom of expression and media. There are substantial interferences with the rights of freedom of assembly and of association. They are also saying there's unlawful and arbitrary killings, extrajudicial killings, torture and cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment or punishment by the government agents. There's also impunity but these things were... on the law enforcement agencies go on, go on. in all these abuses. And the impunity is widespread. It is a well-known fact that throughout history, those who administer the criminal justice system or control it, possess the power or hold power with the potential for abuse and tyranny. And therefore, the exercise of power must be a constant practice of self-limitation and modesty. We are not seeing it under this government. But what is frightening and worrying Although there are these reports, these reports are not being made public. They are not being talked about by their friends in Washington the way they usually do with the violators of so-called human rights. We wonder what is wrong or what has gone wrong. Now, these are things that would normally endear a regime to Washington. So... Why is the State Department highlighting, or low-lighting really, uh, these uh, crimes and misdemeanors on the part of the Zambian regime? Do they want them to try harder or bow lower? What? Comrade George, we saw it with Mobutu Sese Seko. He committed so many human rights violations. He ran a corrupt regime. But he was there. They never took action until when he was no longer on fire. The, Zambia, the current Zambian government, it's their puppet, it's their agent. They have given them the right to establish AFRICOM, the USA military command here, which other African countries in the region, in the region and the continent as a whole are opposed to. So they are doing their bidding. They voted with them on Ukraine. They are doing everything that the Washington wants them to do. So they don't care about the human rights. And it's not strange. We have seen this behavior in many parts of the world. They don't do, they don't take any action against human rights violations of their friends, of their puppets, of their agents. So uh, one country that uh, with a human rights record that is increasingly questioned in Washington since they discovered several trillion dollars worth of gold. That has now suffered an ISIS atrocity, uh, which tends to happen to countries that are uh, unpopular in Washington. 40 people, 38 of them school children, were massacred by an ISIS affiliate. 
how is Uganda going to handle this? Who will come to the aid of Uganda to defeat this scourge of Islamist fundamentalism? This is a challenge that they have unleashed on the world. This terrorism has been there for some time. But terrorism cannot be forced by flattening countries the way they did with Afghanistan, the way they did with Iraq, the, the, the way they did with Libya, the way they did with Syria. It just complicates the problem. It actually encourages it. new methods need to be adopted. These are challenges. Some of them are generated by increasing poverty, especially in our poor countries. Unemployment is on the rise, leading to more and more divisions, ethnic divisions, religious divisions, and so on. These are problems that cannot be solved by military means a lot. More is needed to deal with these complex problems. We have seen it in Afghanistan. For more than 20 years, the mightiest army in the world failed to defeat a ragtag army. They failed to defeat, the entire NATO failed to defeat a ragtag army for 20 years. There are still conflicts going on in Iraq. They are still fighting in Libya, where the mightiest army of the world control. So what is telling us that these are problems that cannot be solved by military means or by the use of force or arms. A more intelligent approach is needed by humanity to deal with the issue of terrorism. It is an issue that well, we perhaps all so. humanity should uh, I, I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's either or. Uh, if I were the Ugandan government, I would be sending for Wagner uh, right now. I'd be asking Russia to defend the country from uh, the scourge of ISIS, as they did help to do in Syria. And of course, I'd be following your other path also of trying to uh, reduce the virulence of this threat uh, by cutting off the endless supply, it seems, of unemployed and desperate youth into their ranks. But we'll discuss that another time. I wanted, and the time left, to ask you what's going on in Chad. I was very delighted, call me uh, a lover of France if you like, I was delighted to see uh, the Chad army arresting French soldiers illegally on their soil, uh, having crossed the Sudan border uh, on social media earlier today. What's going on there? Why doesn't France know when it's no longer wanted? It's not only the church. They are also no longer wanted in Mali. They are also no longer wanted in Burkina Faso. They are not wanted in most of the French-speaking African countries. They should ask themselves why. There is a rejection to neocolonialism on the continent that is growing. France has faced this again. It can no longer relate with its former colonies in the way it has done for the last six or so decades. The exploitation of these countries, the humiliation of these countries has to come to an end. A more just, more fair, more humane relationship is needed. The old way can, no matter how much military personnel is sent there, the French army, the French military is being expelled from its former colonies now. A new relationship has to emerge. The circumstances are changing. Nothing lasts forever. Especially exploitation and humiliation can never last forever. Good deeds just can last. Wonderful last ones. 
Towards Dr. Fred Mbembe in Zambia, leader of the Zambian Socialist Party. Stay safe and we'll stay watching how you're doing. Thank you for joining us.